Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to For the Now Space News. The often imitated but never replicated syntax news program. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivan Matthew Colin Glass. You can call me Jason. And this is for the week ending Saturday, November 19th, 2022. In this edition, we're going to have, as usual, a plethora of uh, scintillating headlines, which I've syntaxed. Then we're going to have our Now Space Syntax lesson. And then we're going to have our Cognitive Conjecture section. And I've also added a new section to this, uh, where I try to bring on some culture to the show, which or contribute culture to my viewership which has nothing really to do with correct sentence structure, uh, but just has to do with uh, us, everyone as men and women, human beings. And so I'll be sharing things like music that I think is worthwhile or of value to share or books, reading material. And again, not necessarily related to quantum grammar, but things that I think contribute to the positivity of the culture. Stay tuned for that. So without further ado, let's get to the headlines. Our first headline comes from NPR, and it's from the politics section, and it says, P Speaker Pelosi says she will step down as party leader after two decades at the top. Uh, we have a couple adjectives uh, modifying says into a pronoun, followed by adverb she, which is modifying will into a future tense adjective which is coloring step into an adjective which is coloring down into a pronoun followed by adverb adjective pronoun adverb adjective adjective pronoun and an adverb dangling participle verb whole bunch of modification going on in this uh, headline as well as you see in yellow are the particles of negation and particles of negation ladies and gentlemen would be considered uh, any particle of a word that means no, that is a negative condition of state, such as a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, a vowel standing by itself, uh, a prefix or a suffix, which means no and or negates the now space, such as de in decades means no, decades, no cades. In the same sense that uh, deconstruct means not to construct. Sort of the same principle. And so as to the subject matter of this Fiction Babble headline, so I guess Pelosi is a speaker. Uh, she knows how to speak. She hasn't stepped down yet, but she will step down. Uh, there's some sort of party going on, and I guess she's the leader of that party. I guess she's done partying now. She's she's uh, she's had two decades of partying, and she's been at the top of the party. So now she's I guess going to step down and go to the bottom of the party, uh, which you know, contract is by choice, and uh, that's her choice. Next headline also comes from NPR. It says James Webb Telescope spots galaxies near the dawn of time thrilling scientists we have our vowel in front of a consonant and of is a particle of negation and the ing is a particle of negation because it is a modifier it modifies the condition of state of thrill so we have a series of tangible contract adjectives culminating in the non-tangible contract pronoun near and as we all know, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, or as in this case, an adverb, which is modifying tangible contract dawn into a verb. And as you may or may not know, verbs in this context of fiction babble cannot exist unless they are being modified and preceded by non-tangible contract adverbs. And then this particular verb is followed by non-tangible contract adverb of, which is modifying time, into a verb and then a break in the continuance of the evidence with a comma and then tangible contract thrilling adjective coloring tangible contract scientists into a 
pronoun. So a James Webb telescope, which I guess allows the human eye to see large distances uh, in space, space, it spots galaxies near the dawn of time. So the dawn of time is a is a place. And if you remember, uh, if you check out the video that I recently published regarding the tilde, which hopefully if my editing team does their job, there will be a link up here somewhere about now to that video. I do clarify that time, i.e. positions along the now space continuum, they are considered locations. And this adverb verb adjective pronoun fiction headline is providing uh, sort of a circumstantial verification continuance of the evidence to what I just said in my tilde video that in their uh, minds, in their adverb verb adjective pronoun language, the dawn of time is a location and they're looking at it through a telescope. And understandably, the scientists are thrilled. So maybe they'll be able to put some tinfoil and popsicle sticks together like they did to go to the moon and they'll be able to travel maybe to the to the dawn of time so we can see the sunrise um, I wonder if you turn around and look the other way if you if you see the uh, the twilight of time maybe or the dusk of time that would be interesting wouldn't it another headline from NPR Wimbledon will allow women to wear colored undershorts in nod to period concerns so we have adjective adjective in the future tense adjective women is a pronoun two is an adverb in the future tense modifying where into an adjective which is coloring colored into past tense adjective which is coloring undershorts into a pronoun breaking the continuance of the evidence with a comma non-tangible contract adverb in modifying not into a verb followed by future tense adverb to modifying period into tangible contract adjective which is coloring concerns into tangible contract pronoun if I'm not mistaken Wimbledon's women's tennis started in 1884 and only now in the year 2022 are they talking about allowing colored undershorts in a nod to period concerns what period are they talking about like the period like when I was in high school uh, I had first period second period third period fourth period or are they talking about the full stop period or are they talking about a different kind of period a period that has color Hmm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a really ludicrous headline because I had no idea that Wimbledon had a dress code that women had to wear, I can reasonably and logically guess, white undershorts. Now, keep in mind, they have not allowed the colored undershorts yet. They will allow it. So sometime in the future, who knows when that will be, they will allow colored undershorts bravo Wimbledon from 1884 to 2022 you are on the cutting edge of rights next headline comes from science news a clam presumed extinct for 40,000 years has been found alive Researchers still don't know how the bivalve evaded science for so long. Adverb, adjective, adjective future tense. I'm sorry, adjective past tense. Uh, pronoun, adverb future tense. Adjective, 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 adjective pronoun. And then researchers is adjective still is pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, adjective past tense, adjective pronoun future tense adverb dangling participle verb so it's never good to presume or assume ladies and gentlemen 
I think we know that. I think you know that, if you're watching this channel. Uh, the particles of negation we have here, PRE, is uh, it negates the now space. It means no. It's future tense. And then we have ED, which is past tense. So you have both of those things in the word. However, the reason why its syntax is past tense is because ED comes at the end. And as we all know, the authority comes at the end, so that, therefore, it is past tense. Uh, FOR is future tense in this context. And uh, long would be the dangling participle verb. And what I mean by that is, if you think about what a verb is, literally, it's cogitation, it's thinking. And if it's coming at the end there, then there's nothing left to think about, so it's kind of dangling there. So that's the closure on dangling participle verb. So how could science, I'm just curious, uh, first of all, how could scientists know, scientists, for 40,000 years, scientists have been presuming that this clam has been extinct? I would like to read the peer-reviewed scientific journals from 40,000 years ago to get a continuance of the evidence on this, ladies and gentlemen, because I was not aware of any scientific journals 40,000 years ago. But science has been presuming for 40,000 years, which makes a lot of sense because that's what the fiction does, including fiction science. They presume. And then uh, we have uh, how the bivalve evaded science for so long. You can run, but you can't hide from science. And those entities that fund science to get the results that they want. Next headline comes from Bloomberg. A truly unfathomable darkness at the heart of Thanksgiving as Americans gather to celebrate over the traditional turkey dinner, they'll unwittingly be contributing to an escalating cycle of dis-ease and waste. Period. So we have opinion as a pronoun, and then the name Amanda Little as adjective pronoun, particle of negation LY, which poisons a tangible contract word into non-tangibility, hence uh, words with LY would normally be adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. Then we have the particles of negation, vowel in front of a consonant, vowel by itself, the ING gerund modifier, TO, future tense, uh, unwittingly, that has two particles particles of negation in it, but because the LY comes at the end, as I mentioned in the other headline, uh, authority comes at the end, so it does poison the entire thing into non-tangibility. Hence, that's why it's an adverb. Uh, future tense, too. And DIS is a particle of negation. And we have a, a little uh, conjunction scenario there at the end of disease and waste, adverb, verb, conjunction, dangling participle verb. The conjunction is a neutral condition of state. It is not modified, nor does it modify anything. So therefore, in this case, it's just a bridge between the two verbs, which are both being modified by adverb of. Now, to get on to the meat of the matter of this article, uh, she's talking about an escalating cycle of disease and waste, I guess, about waste of food and disease within the meat of the turkey, perhaps, or, you know, things like that, garbage. What she's talking about, truly unfathomable darkness at the heart of Thanksgiving, I disagree, uh, because to me, the truly unfathomable darkness at the heart of Thanksgiving is its origins which are still taught in, to my knowledge, public schools to this day, in that you got the pilgrims that came over to North America where the First Nations were here, and they got together, and the Native Americans showed them, you know, introduced them to corn, and the Puritans and the, the, the pilgrims, or who, whatever they named themselves, uh, introduced the Indians to God, and they had got together and broke bread and had a nice little dinner and they were thankful and they became great friends and great communities were built and it was just a, a 
all around uh, love fest for everyone. Which, of course, as we now know, is not quite what happened. It was actually a the beginning of a genocide, a chemical warfare with the smallpox blankets that the, the pilgrims gave to the First Nations. So here, keep you and your children warm at night with these chemical warfare blankets. Basically poisoning, bringing disease uh, to the First Nations to weaken them and so that uh, they could basically take over the continent, which they did. Which they did. And they rounded up the First Nations and sent them off into little areas of land and pushed them around, killed them, uh, forced their children to go to um, religious schools, cut their hair, forced them to speak the Queen's English, and if they spoke their native tongue, they got beat and abused and killed, and I could just go on and on with it. It's an atrocity, and that, that is a truly unfathomable, unfathomable darkness at the heart of Thanksgiving. Next headline comes from Defense News. In a first, Space Force picks private university as a war college. Oh, wow. Space Force picks private. I love alliteration in the fiction. So we have space, which is a P, and then picks private. There's two more Ps. It really helps with the flow of the headline. So we have pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, 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 pronoun, Adverb, adjective, pronoun. And we have some particles of negation. PRI is a particle of negation. I don't know if people realize that. But when you say private and confidential, if you're using correct sentence structure, private is not correct because PRI means the same thing as PRE. And PRO, it means no. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this has to do with a war college. So I guess you can go to college to learn to get a degree in war, I guess. I don't know what they mean by degree. Is it like a Masonic degree or something? I don't, I don't know. But Space Force, that's just an amazing concept in and of itself. But I guess uh, in the past, from what I can logically infer from this headline, the military has basically created their own war colleges. But in this case, they're going to pick, I think, John Hopkins University as their war college rather than creating one from scratch. So they're going to kind of piggyback onto Johns Hopkins, commandeer the vessel, and turn it into a war college. So they can pew, pew, pew in outer space. Outer space. Josh. Next headline comes from Positive News. The surprisingly simple solution to homelessness that's changing lives. Pronoun, adverb. Adjective pronoun, adverb future tense. Verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun. So we have the S-U-R as a particle of negation because it means the same thing as sub, uh, sir. Basically, you know, surname, meaning it's, uh, it's last, or S-U-B means under. Either which way, it negates the, the geometric level plane field of contract, sir and sub. And then, of course, L-Y is the particle of negation that poisons a tangible contract word into a non-tangible contract word. And what this is talking about here is in some places on earth, some entities, some corporations, some businesses, some communities have decided to simply give homeless people homes, to give it to them. I don't know if there are prerequisites to it, but supposedly in every community where they've done this, just simply given empty, vacant homes to homeless people, it's had positive outcome and, and has worked out very well. I'm sure there's a contingency plan in place where, yeah, you get there and you can have, you know, the first six months are on us, basically, but you must get a job or find some way, make an effort to get some income or find a way to begin paying your utilities or whatever's, and then begin paying your rent, and then get on your feet, which is understandable and perfectly, you know, fair. Rule one, rule equal. And 
it's been successful. And ladies and gentlemen, there are tons, hundreds of thousands of vacant homes in North America alone. So I, I'm pretty sure the last statistics I read a couple years ago was that the vacant homes outnumber the number, the known number of homeless people. So it would be very easy to house them if the government wanted to. Now it's time for the continuum, i.e. now space, syntax lesson, where we go through and we syntax a headline together in real time. So let's look for these particles of negation in here. Again, I would not mark US as a particle of negation simply because it's a name. And with the balance of the honor and the grace, um, just like someone who may have a given name that they use that has a vowel in front of a consonant, I wouldn't use that as a particle of negation either, or credential it as such, just with the balance of the honor and the grace. So we're looking at particles of negation here. RE means no, vowel in front of a consonant. SE in front of a hard consonant means no, vowel in front of a consonant there, and N, TO, future tense, vowel in front of a consonant, <laughs> pre prepared wow two part three particles of negation in that word uh, found in front of a consonant and now we can move on to the syntaxing so we start at the end of the word group and work backwards the first question we ask is this word shows tangible or non-tangible well it's tangible how about evidence? Evidence is also tangible. So we have two tangible contract words in a row. The first one is going to be an adjective, and the second one is going to be a pronoun. Then we have this comma, which is a break in the continuous of the evidence. So how about plan? Is plan tangible or non-tangible? Tangible. Lockdown is tangible. Pre-prepared is tangible. Impose is tangible. And two is non-tangible. Now we have enough to syntax. So TO would be an adverb in the future tense, modifying impose into an adjective. Pre-prepared is a compound adjective in the past tense, 3.8. And then lockdown is an adjective. And then plan is a pronoun as the last tangible contract in a series of tangible contract words. So once you can certify that you've hit this adverb, which we have in two, you can take this whole sentence away. To impose pre-prepared lockdown plan evidence shows you can get rid of that and start at 2020 and begin working backwards again. Because although adverbs do not function as breaks in the continuance of the evidence, they sort of act like they are if that makes sense. So we have in March 2020, and that is adverb, adjective, pronoun, because 2020 is tangible, March is tangible, and in is non-tangible. Again, we've hit that adverb. And then we have by National Security Council. Council is tangible contract, pronoun, security, tangible contract, adjective, national, tangible contract, adjective, and then by is non-tangible contract, adverb. Over is non-tangible contract, pronoun, because it's being colored by tangible contract, adjective taken, response, tangible contract, adjective, COVID, tangible contract, adjective, and U.S. is tangible contract, adjective. So what type of value or meaning can we give to this headline. U.S. COVID response taken over by National Security Council in March 2020 to impose pre-prepared pre pre lockdown plan. So I guess they're saying that they had a lockdown plan in place well before this whole condition happened. They were ready for it. They had it already in place and ready to go basically is what they're saying. Is it any surprise? 
Let's move on to memes of the week for a little humor in the program. This first one, I don't think there's any explanation needed for this one. This one's pretty funny with uh, Santa Claus speaking with a little child. And the last one, which with these new phones, I mean, come on. If you've had a phone for one, two, or three years like me, there's no way you can organize all that stuff. This week's cognitive conjecture section comes from Omens of Alchemy uh, YouTube channel. It was published three years ago, actually. And the title of the video is Right to Travel and Proper Grammar Syntax. Now, just the way the title is written tells me that no one at this point in time, three years ago in this video, no one really has a clue what correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is. Let's have a listen and uh, see what's going on in this video. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Tara Green, roaming the Pacific Northwest wild and free. I'm in Ashland, Oregon with my friend Mattia, and he's been doing some really interesting research that we're going to talk about today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't usually do interviews, so this is uh, cool to be sharing things. Usually I've just been He noticed her shoes. She took her shoes off, and so he took his shoe do shoes off. Yet they're outside. That's interesting. Talking with my friends, so... About all this stuff. So it's good to yeah. get the word out um, to the people. Yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> Here's one thing, ladies and gentlemen, that has nothing to do with anything other than etiquette. Uh, something that I'm a big proponent of. Anyone that knows me personally knows this. He's sitting there speaking with a young woman, and he has a hat on. Where I come from, I'm old school. Um, you don't wear hats indoors, and you certainly don't wear them when you're speaking with a member of the uh, opposite sex, with a female. You don't. It's just etiquette. And I, I think that has completely been lost on this generation. <laughs> what, it, what, what is it that you have been studying? Uh, uh, well, I've been studying a lot. Basically, you know, I've, I guess you could say I got pulled into the sovereignty movement. And, like, some family members died, really, and then I had an inheritance, and I wanted to look into how to protect that inheritance. And it kind of got me into the sovereignty stuff where I could like use legal things to protect my estate and things like that and through that I learned about like the right to travel that we don't actually need to be licensed or have insurance or registered because it's a right not a privilege that we're granted ladies and gentlemen when you think of those two words right and privilege and if you're going to think about them in the context of quantum grammar, rights are something that are given to you by a higher authority. And a privilege is no contract. Um, so if you really think about it, like you have, what's the word that they use in the, uh, in a lot of the, a lot of the patriots use that word, like, uh, inherent human rights it still implies that there's an authority giving a right and that violates the geometric level playing field of contract that's why i personally don't participate with that concept of rights there are no rights it's just do no harm basically and what he's talking about here you know an inheritance and the legal system and trying to find a way to uh, protect that inheritance through the legal system. Yes, I'm sure there are ways to do that, but it all originates from the fiction system, so 
theoretically, you would have to find a legal remedy for that. Uh, but in rights, you know, I just brought to my mind what uh, Cohen David Ivan Cohen Miller once said about rights. That the he said that a judge told him something like uh, a chicken has a right to eat and a fox has a right to eat. That's enough said about rights. And so we pretty much have free exercise of that right so long as we're not har harming anyone. And um, after my registration went expired, uh, I, uh, I didn't do anything about it. And, and then things happened. I was driving without insurance and I got caught and I got a ticket and that caused my license to get suspended and I kept driving and I was you know I'd try to talk to the cop and be like well I don't have to have it and uh, um, learned that I'm really not gonna get anywhere explaining things to a police officer because he's if he knows who I am he's gonna give me a ticket anyway and I'm gonna have to explain it in court so see what he just said there a lot of people miss this but he seems pretty, you know, pretty on point about that. He understands, uh, as David Wynn Miller once told me, don't get, a, don't get in a pissing contest with a cop. Basically, I'm, I have a case, uh, uh, several cases for driving uninsured without a license or registration. And through that, I'm just learning a whole lot about how to beat that. Yeah, it sounds like one of the greatest things you've been learning about on how to beat that language. Uh, yeah, that's a big part of it because all legal battles are just word battles. It's all a big word war. Yeah, a big word war. And um, Again, ladies and gentlemen, if that's psychologically how you look at something, as if it's a war, then, then war is what you're going to get. So, I mean, that that's one aspect of it that I've gone to is just learning how to uh, learning the legal language and then learning that the actual like patented legal language is not the legal language used by the courts and they're actually using false conveyance of language which is a form of fraud and therefore I'm learning correct it's called correct communication parse syntax grammar. Correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. And from my knowledge, it is not a legal language. It's not a language, it's a grammar. It's a technology. And uh, yeah, I think I'll end it here because I can tell that this individual at, th at this time had just begun their journey didn't really have a grasp of it although they have a very good grasp of the psychology of how the system the fiction system works and uh, by extension I would reasonably guess that he would probably have an easier time with the psychology of quantum grammar than most people would because of his cognition of the legal system the fiction system so i'm really curious you know as to how it turned out for this individual this was three years ago i wonder if they continued their studies now we're going to move on to the cognitive culture portion of the program which is a new section i'm adding on here at the end where i sort of do a review of a piece of culture that i think the viewer may find some value in not necessarily connected to quantum grammar, but it could be books, music, movies, just some piece of culture uh, that I feel like sharing with you. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this section or if you have any suggestions. For this edition of For the Cognitive Culture, I'd like to introduce this book, The Guitar Circle by Robert Fripp. The packaging and presentation is awesome. You got this dust jacket here. It gives you a little idea of what the book is about. And what it looks like underneath. It's pretty sweet. 
That's Robert Fripp. He's the guitar player for the band known as King Crimson. And if you didn't know this about Robert, he has studied, much like myself, the fourth way of G.I. Gurdjieff, an esoteric teacher who taught during the late 1800s, early eight, uh, 1900s. And it's just really a great book of philosophy and how to go about learning something. The gentlest of necessities. And it's about music. And at the end here, uh, music is the cup which holds the wine of silence. Or as Shakespeare said, if music be the food of love, play on. It is a remarkable opportunity to have had most of my life close to and involved in music. This is Robert Fripp talking, of course. Uh, music is a language. Only silence has a greater power to move me. So this is my contribution to the cognitive culture of For the Now Space News. If you're interested in philosophy, you don't even have to be a guitar player to read this book. It's a great book of philosophy. Uh, go ahead, do your homework, do your research, Google it, look it up, buy it. Because if you buy it uh, from this guy, you will be supporting him. And I think it's a pretty good uh, place to put value for rule one, rule equal performances. Robert Fripp, The Guitar Circle. And that about wraps it up for this week's edition, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. As I'm looking out my window right now, the snow is coming down slowly and softly but heavily and it's accumulating on the ground i hope everybody stays safe out there i hope everybody has a great holiday coming up here with your family your friends however you choose to celebrate it whatever you're choosing to give thanks for of course i give thanks to you my viewers for watching these videos and to the members for supporting my work to the commenters for commenting in the comments field, to my students uh, for the hard work you, you all put in, and of course to my inner circle, my family, my friends, those that I have trust counts with. I appreciate all of you. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. As always, if you want to learn this grammar, if you want to learn this technology, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And uh, we'll, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation for you. Uh, so you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. And we'll find out if this is something that you want to learn how to use. Uh, you can also become a member. Click the join button below this video and find out more regarding that. And also I'd like to leave a little note here at the end. For those of you who do contact me via email and you do request a brief video consultation, when I send you the schedule possibility, please read the email in its entirety, including the text in brackets, because you're going to need to confirm it with me, because if I send you a schedule possibility and you don't confirm it, then I'm not going to hold that space for you, and I'm going to give that space to someone else. So, And this is also good training for correct sentence structure. You must be thorough about everything. You must keep a schedule, be very thorough, and keep meticulous records. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.